contrary to what most people think, being a CEO is hard. The road to becoming one involves sacrifices a lot of discipline and a complete focus on honing your skills continuously. After all the trials and tribulations of enrolling and attending a voice acting school and then being considered good enough to debut by your talent agency, it is time to make a lot of money. Yeah, that's daydreaming. You're a junior CEO for three years, earning just enough to survive doing what you love. If you survive, you're then promoted into the ranking system as an F rank CEO. Yes, CEO do have a ranking system, and different ranks correspond to a different base paycheck. Think of each rank as a level in a game. More years of experience, popularity and success naturally lead CU to higher ranks, climbing those until they hit the top. Higher ranks open new opportunities for them. At times, those higher ranks lead to a CU not having to attend auditions, but instead being chosen directly by the director for a role. However, at the same time, higher ranks mean more expensive fees, something that small projects and anime productions will try to avoid at all costs. I find this topic to be quite interesting, and although there isn't much detailed information on it out there, in this episode I will give you a breakdown of the ranking system and how much is estimated to be earned by a CU in each rank, or at least the major ranks. A note that this information is based on Japanese articles about the voice acting career in Japan. I leave in the comments below a couple of interesting reads on the topic that influenced this episode. That is, if you're comfortable reading Japanese. If not, I hope this episode manages to fill you in on those details. So let's kick off this episode of Seiyu Lounge. Welcome to Seiyu Lounge, I'm your host Vanessa and today's topic is a rather simple yet complex one. Seiyu ranking system and their earnings. As fans, we can't help but to wonder at times if our favorite CU are actually just scrapping by or are living a comfortable and good life. That worry is bigger the less experience that the CU we support has in their career or how many work opportunities they are getting per anime season, for example. You've probably read stories about uh, how Tatsisa Suzuki survived in the first years as a CU, thanks to Junichi Suabe supporting him with food and some kitchen appliances. Or how Soma Saito attended college, voice acting school, plus juggled two part-time jobs at the same time just to pay his bills. Or how much Kenichi Suzumura struggled to just scrap by each month when he was a rookie or that Yukikaji didn't go broke thanks to Takahiro Sakurai helping him out in his early days as a CU. There are many stories like these out there, and notice that I mentioned those CU that you now can comfortably say that they are, indeed, successful, and most of them pretty rich. I can't even fathom what happens to those CU that never get to have their breakthrough. It is like Seiyu usually say, it is a brutal industry. These kinds of stories are not made up. Being a Seiyu and earning a lot of money is just a utopia. When I mention that it involves a lot of sacrifice, it includes also the monetary part. You know, you have to invest in classes, moving to Tokyo in case you're not from the city. And as we all know, Tokyo is an insanely expensive city to live in. And why moving to Tokyo? 
most top tier voice acting schools are there, although many already have franchises all over the country. At the same time, Seiyu hopefuls want to be closer to the action. If you don't have a consistent stream of money, it sure is hard to live and survive in Tokyo. And usually that means that as a Seiyu, you really need to work to the bone in your first years, juggling voice acting gigs with a part-time job, and sometimes even multiple part-time jobs. Yeah, being a Seiyu isn't easy, in case you didn't notice. That is why Seiyu are so eager, especially in the last couple of years, to do as many things as they possibly can. Say you release photo books, launch solo careers, kick off apparel brands, write books, turn into YouTubers, do modeling, acting, you name it. You may think that they are following trends. In a sense, yes, they are. But what they are truly looking for are two things. To boost their image so that they can be noticed by producers and companies that might need their talents and to have an additional source of revenue. Pretty acceptable reasons as to why male CEO are now, more than ever, active basically almost everywhere. So the CEO industry does have a ranking system. When a CEO makes their debut, they are titled a junior CEO. A junior CEO is a status that is not even part of the ranking system itself. So, every single CEO out there must be a junior CEO for a whole three years. After that, they are promoted to the lowest rank in the CEO ranking system. But let's break it down a little bit and go into detail on what are the perks, or not, of being a junior CEO. I think of this status as something akin to an unpaid internship. You work hard, often doing jobs others don't want to because, well, they have a status to maintain and in the end you go unnoticed for the duration of the said unpaid internship and are trying to stay afloat and not go broke in the process. Being a junior CEO is not that different in its essence. There's a little bit of money involved, but not as much as they deserve. Besides the fact that it is mandatory to be a junior CEO for three years, there are some things that come with the territory that may seem a bit unfair. Imagine you are a junior CEO and got a supporting role in a kids anime. Pretty big time for you. The producers want the leading actors, for this example, let's just say that they are ranks F and D. And you, of course, the supporting actor, to participate in an online panel or promotional video. What happens is that your colleagues, because they are ranked, they are paid for public appearances. You... not so much. Which takes me to the first point. Junior CU are not paid for public appearances. So whenever you find a rookie CEO on a panel and they don't have three years in the industry, they are not being paid to be there. They are working for free. They unfortunately have to do their job with a smile on their face while thinking how to get money to pay the electricity bill this month. This might seem like I'm throwing shade, but it isn't. I want you to understand why it is so important to support Mel CU or just CU in general from the get-go and that this industry is far from being paradise. Number 2. Junior CU are not entitled to any fees from anime reruns or Blu-ray and DVD releases. It is a common practice for CU to be paid whenever an anime series has a rerun or when a Blu-ray or DVD is released. Simply put, all the work you do as a junior CU for those three years and that ends up being rebroadcasted or distributed in any way is basically unpaid. 
fellow ranked say you are getting their fees and you are glancing at your wristwatch, thinking that it is almost half an hour until your shift at 7-Eleven. If junior CU are not paid for public appearances, rebroadcasts and the sort, what are they paid for? Anime work, adult drama CDs, regular drama CDs, dubbing, if they have any. For example, in anime, they receive per 30 minute episode 15,000 yen, which converts to 122 euros or 143 dollars. In drama CDs, for example, they receive a flat rate per word, around 20 to 50 yen, which is under 50 cents in both euros and dollars. And that's the rate they get, basically, if they are paid at all. So what if that CU barely has any lines and ends up acting one minute in total in an anime series? Do they get paid? They do. They still get those 15,000 yen. It's the base rate, regardless if you have a lot of lines or few. Then you might think, well, just a grunt in an anime series and I score 15,000 yen. That's good business. Yeah, I also don't think so. This is not enough money because rents in Tokyo are ridiculously high and you still have to eat and pay for utility bills. Remember, the electricity bill and everything. It's still a lot to pay. Don't forget that your talent agency gets 20% of the money you make and the other 20% are withholding tax, so in the end you get around 9,000, 10,000 yen per 30 minute episode. Around 80 euros or 90 dollars per episode is not that much. And remember as well, you are a junior CEO, people don't know you and you have to go audition to as many roles in anime as possible, trying to score more minor roles or even a supporting role or two to have enough to scrap by and survive another month. To earn the bare minimum to survive in the industry as a junior CU, you have to, at least, earn a minimum of 200,000 yen per month. On average, rents in Tokyo metropolitan area are around 100,000 yen per month. Add the utility bills, food and transportation, and you have just enough to survive. How many episodes in anime in one month you must have? 19. As a rookie seiyuu, those minor roles that no one pays attention to actually help them have money to meet all their necessities. But few junior seiyuu have that workload. Continuing our exercise, the three years are over. After graduating from being a junior CU, you're finally in the big league. Congratulations! Now you are a rank F as a CU, the lowest rank available. And you need to climb the ranks if you ever want to live off being a voice actor and live comfortably. The CU ranking system. CU are ranked from F to A, or alternatively, they are ranked 15 up until rank 1. Both are traditional ranking systems within the CU industry. There are CU that have no rank. These are the top of the top, the ones that get to negotiate their paychecks. These ranks can be quickly climbable if you happen to have a breakthrough moment in your career, such as winning an award at the yearly Seiyu Awards, being the leading actor in a popular anime series, or being part of a 2D idol group or project that is extremely popular. If a Seiyu manages to keep their momentum going, they can rise pretty quickly in the ranking. And note that you may have some veteran CU that unfortunately don't have much work nor popularity and are not ranked at the top. 
they may even be in the middle of the ranking. At the same time, you may have CEO that are not even 40 years old and they are already at the top due to insane popularity. Reaching the top of the CEO ranking system is not decided solely by how long you've been in the industry. It is a mix of experience, popularity, variety of work and workload. Now, I won't be going over what each rank is entitled to because there is little information on that available. However, I can compare the lower to the higher tiers for you as both Daisuke Namikawa, Akio Otsuka and Masako Nozawa have dished about those two ranks and the no rank CU on TV appearances and, in Otsuka's case, in a book about the CU industry. An F rank CU earns 15,000 yen per anime episode. An A rank CU earns 45,000 yen per anime episode. And a no rank CU goes over the 45,000 yen threshold. There's no limit in there and fees are negotiated directly with the CU themselves and are different case by case. If you notice, even at an A rank, CU still have to do a lot of anime work to have a decent paycheck. That's why many CU branch out and do other things. There has been an interesting shift in the industry though. Due to the fact that CU work can fluctuate a lot, some talent agencies have ditched the F to A ranking system and instead are paying a fixed monthly fee to their voice acting talents. This seems like a fairer option to the ranking system, one that enables junior CU and even those in higher ranks, but with drastic reductions of workload, to have a steady source of income. It introduces more stability in an industry that is known for being extremely volatile. Why not going freelance? While going freelance might seem like the best decision ever, you need to have a certain status to be able to do so and continue to have work coming to you. As a freelance CU, you decide the jobs you want to audition for or if you're offered roles, which to reject or accept. How much are your fees, the money you make is all yours, only taxes deducted, but at the same time you still need to audition for roles, plus you have to maintain an established image that makes people want to continue to work with you and have your name in their projects. For that you need to sell your image. A good way is by kicking off a solo career, doing a lot of variety work, participating in live reading events, doing theatre or acting in TV dramas. A good example of male CU that are freelancers and still have a solid stream of work include Daisuke Ono and Osoya Yoshimasa. And what about setting up their own talent agency? Male CU like Kenichi Suzumura, Toshiyuki Morikawa, Tetsuya Kakihara, Shinosuke Tachibana and Jun Fukuyama have established their own talent agencies. Most have enlisted friends or acquaintances in the industry to join their own talent agencies. Usually these types of agencies do not ask for insanely high percentages from a CU's earnings like most established big talent agencies do. This ends up creating a safe, sound and respectful environment for junior CU and veterans alike. Which are the jobs that pay the most? Contrary to popular belief, anime work is one of the lowest paying jobs for a CU. As of 2018, the work that pays the best for CU is lending their voice to pachinko machines. For reference, pachinko machines are arcade games that work similarly to slot machines in casinos. 
There is no reference as to how much are the fees for pachinko work. Then we have games that pay 30 yen for junior CU up to 200 yen for A rank CU per word. The fee per word can double in case of popular games. Dubbing of foreign movies that pays 50,000 yen per hour. That's the base fee. It can go up to 150,000 yen per hour for A rank CU. Narration that pays 100,000 yen per episode. That's the average fee. And you can go up to 1 million yen for A rank CU. Anime that pays 15,000 yen for junior CU, up to 45,000 yen for A rank CU per 30 minute episodes. Radio that pays 5,000 yen for junior CU, up to 10,000 yen for A rank CU per episode. A note that radio work is viewed as a stepping stone for CU, usually used as training for junior CU or to establish and solidify the image of CU that later take off for different projects. For reference, the annual income of male CU such as Hiroshi Kamiya and Tomokazu Sugita is estimated to be over 15 million yen. Male CU Koichi Yamadera earns more than 20 million yen per year. A note that work as an artist or singer and variety appearances are not mentioned anywhere. Variety appearances should not be very different in rates as the ones specific for their ranks in the anime category. I may be wrong on this one. Then again, there is no information out there about how much money CU earn from variety appearances. Now, I dare say that work as an artist or singer can be really different in fees between CU. If the CU is a physical sales monster, like Mamoru Miyano or Soma Saito tend to be, their fees, of course, extracting the percentage that the music labels take, are pretty substantial. And if you're a sales monster and also a singer-songwriter for everything you release, like Soma Saito, yep, is making big money by being a solo artist. If you produce, compose and write everything but don't have big sales numbers, like Toshiki Toyonaga, you still manage to earn fees on par with those that Mamoru Mienu and Soma Saito earn, and that is because he basically doesn't have a team of his own, and he is his own boss. He owns the music label. Selling a lot of CDs is necessary to break even from the expenses incurred during the album or single production. After that, all sales over that necessary number which depends from artist to artist and even for the same artist, it depends from release to release, as some CDs might be even more expensive to craft than others. Of course, those sales numbers that go over the necessary number are profit. Also, the more active they are, releasing multiple CDs or digital singles per year, the more money they make. That is, of course, if their sales are consistent across all releases in that year. Remember, underperforming CDs usually end up creating debt instead of turning a profit. All in all, the big reason as to why many male CU are desperately trying to kick off a career as a solo artist is because of how high their fees can be if they are successful. As you can tell, being a CU is not easy. Earning a lot of money doing voice acting work is also not easy. They will have to literally sell themselves continuously in order to be successful. 
and like Daisuke and Amikawa said on TV when asked about the CU industry, only 300 out of 3,000 actually get to live off of their dream job as voice actors. This is 10% of those active or registered as CU. The others, unfortunately, have to strive to stay afloat while having to juggle voice acting work with part-time jobs. The CU industry is not shy about being hard and cruel. Now, this was a heavy episode. Hope the numbers didn't confuse you and I only scratched the surface because, believe me, things get a lot darker and dirtier as soon as you understand the power plays, manipulation, politics and interests that are at the core as to why some CU are insanely popular. But I leave that for another episode. Regardless, it is never enough to stress that you should support your favorite male CU in the best way possible. If you do have the means, please support male CU directly. Like I mentioned in previous episodes, purchasing their music, the games they voice characters in, magazines, their books and apparel are direct ways to help them stay afloat in the industry. So tell me. What do you think about the CU ranking system? And were you aware that CU are not well paid? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly email CU and music related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of CU Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you around.